Hello chess fans, this is Rick from chess to impress with a video on the 2018 Grand Chess Tour. These are the events, it's the fourth year that the Grand Chess Tour is played and it will start in Leuven in Belgium in the Your Next Move event, Rapid and Blitz there. Also Rapid and Blitz in Paris a few days later. Then in August there will be St. Louis Rapid and Blitz in the United States of America, followed by a classical tournament, the Sink Field Cup. The Grand Chess Tour Finals will be held in London in December. The dates still have to be arranged. So the first event is in Leuven in Belgium and these are the 10 participants. Alexander Grishuk, Fabiano Kairana, Hikaru Nakamura, Levon Aronian, Maxime Vachelagrave, Shakhyar Mamadyarov, Sergei Karyakin, Vishwanathan Anand, Wesley So and Anish Giri. Eight of these 10 players also played in Norway chess that has just finished. And the only big name that is not here is Magnus Carlsen. The rapid part has been finished and Wesley So went on a rampage. There were two points for a win in the rapid and So scored 14 out of 18 points, which is seven out of nine in the scoring system that we're used to. Levon Aronian and Maxime Vachelagrave finished three points behind him and you can see the rest of the field there. Very surprising to see Vishwanathan Anand in bottom place. He is the reigning rapid world champion but in this tournament he didn't get going. Also Fabiana Carana is low with seven points out of a possible 18. He of course just won the Norway chess event in great style. Let's look at one of the games of Wesley So in this game that I will show you. He will play his compatriot Hikaru Nakamura, so an all USA clash. It was played on the 14th of June 2018. It was the first round of the third day, so it was round seven. Let's have a look at the game. The time control was 25 minutes with a 10 second delay. White was Hikaru Nakamura, black was Wesley So. Nakamura opened d4, knight f6, Wesley So after day 2 had a tournament performance rating of 3061 after winning 4 games and drawing 2. Bishop f4 from Nakamura and d5 from So, e3, Nakamura plays the London system and c5 which is the main reply. Now c3 is the main move, knight f3 is also popular. But Nakamura played the third option, d takes c5. Now you can try and win the pawn back straight away. Queen a5 check, knight c3 and queen takes c5. But that's not great, as Grandmaster Alejandro Ramirez showed in a live broadcast. Then black will get some trouble with his development. White can play knight b5, looks like a beginner's move, said Ramirez. But it is not. The threat is now knight c7, protected by the bishop with a nasty fork. And knight a6 is really the only way to deal with that. Protecting the c7 square, well enough. But now the queen on c5 is a bit awkward. b4 may be coming, knight f3, d4 will be coming. Square e5 is in white hands and black will find it difficult to complete his development as Grandmaster Ramirez showed. So Queen a5 check to win the pawn back straight away was not So's option. Knight c6 is another idea to try and push e5 and then win the pawn back. But then Bishop b5 spoils that idea because of the pin. So Wesley So in the end went for e6, threatening to take back the pawn. Nakamura doesn't give up that pawn without a fight, plays b4, a5 undermining the b4 pawn, and c3. The standard way to try and win back the pawn is now b6, but as Ramirez showed, this is in this case not the right way to play. It resembles a variation from the queen's gambit, accepted, and then the bishop is always on c1, but in this case it's on f4, and that makes bishop takes b8 possible. Rook takes b8, and now bishop b5 check is a very nasty check. 
if you interpose the bishop or the knight, it doesn't really matter. Let's say you interpose the bishop, then there is c6, and it's attacking that piece on d7, and the piece cannot really play, because then c7 will come with check, and that will cost black the queen. So after a bishop b5 check, you have to go to e7 with your king, and that's definitely not what you want to do. So b6 is not the right move here, and Wesley So played bishop d7. He knew all this. Queen b3 from Nakamura, not a good move, and as we often see, a bad move is followed by a worse one. So took up b4, Nakamura took back, and now b6. As I said, a standard move to win back the pawn in this type of structure. But here comes the worst move. Bishop d6 was played by Nakamura, and that really is not a good move. There are several ways for black to get an advantage, and Wesley So found a very nice one. He played knight e4, and if you now take on f8, then black has an in-between move. Queen f6 with a double threat on f2, and this rook is hanging in the corner. So you have to save your king, f3, then you have time to take back on f8, because that rook is still hanging. Black will win material. So after knight e4, Nakamura had a problem, and he came up with queen b2 to protect himself against queen f6. Simple chess from Wesley So. He took on d6, c take d6, now he played queen f6, and after that move, Wesley So got up from the board and went for a walk in a rapid game. That's how confident he was. Nakamura swapped the queens. G takes. B5, not really a move you want to make. But as Ramirez explained, black is going to take on D6 and then threatening to take on B4. You can't give up those pawns. Bishop takes D6 came. And now let's look at his position. After 13 moves, black already has a great position. Black has the two bishops, an advantage in development, look at all these pieces that are still at home for white, and black has a better pawn center, two pawns in the center versus white, only has one. International master Jovanka Huska said in a live broadcast, why does everybody impale themselves on their own sword when playing Wesley So? Yes, Nakamura really did not have a good, have a good opening with white he is worse, much worse after 13 moves only. He played a4, king e7, bishop d3 developing, rook c8. Grandmaster Sarawan commented how strong black's rooks are in this position. Knight e2 developing, and e5. Threatening e4, and then this bishop is trapped. It can't go to c2 because of the rook. Here a nice variation was given in a li live broadcast. It looks like white cannot castle, cannot put his king safe and develop that rook because of e4, winning indeed that bishop. But there are some magical tactics here. Knight e c3. And if you now take the piece, that's not the best move. Bishop e6. And black has a big advantage. But if you take that piece, then there is knight takes d5 check. King d8 and knight takes b6, and suddenly it is a mess on the board. White will win some material back, and suddenly these pawns are very strong instead of weak, and this pawn might be lost as well. But Nakamura did not castle after e5, he played f3. f5 from So, and again there's a threat of e4 winning the bishop. Nakamura played rook a2 to control the c2 square, to avoid losing that bishop. Bishop e6 from So, and again black has the two bishops, a mighty pawn center, two strong rooks, and the only piece that is not doing anything is ready to jump through d7 to the very nice square on c5. Black is dominating this position in every way. Rook c2 from Nakamura, giving up the a4 pawn. Bishop b4 check, king stepped aside, and that pawn was gone. On top of everything else, black is now also material up, a pawn up. 
Rook takes c8, bishop takes c8, and knight e c3, hitting the rook. That knight was taken, knight takes, and rook a3, winning a piece, because these two pieces are lined up. It looks like there's a way out for white. Nakamura played knight takes d5 check. King d6. And now let's look at this position. Two white pieces are hanging. This one and this one. And also rook a1. Check. With a skewer is a threat. But as said, white. It looked like white had a way out. Nakamura took on b6. Counter attacking the bishop. Bishop e6 was played, and now bishop b1. White has solved all his three problems, but now there's a fourth one. This knight will get trapped. After king c5. The knight has no squares. Nakamura played knight c8. Bishop takes c8, and Nakamura could have safely resigned here, but he played on, probably out of frustration. King f2, bishop back to e6. G4, F takes, White takes a pawn, a dying man can eat everything. Knight D7, Rook B1, hoping maybe to one day start running with that pawn. Rook A2 check, King G3, G takes F3, and White has another pawn that starts running. F5, King takes F3, and Knight f6. Here Nakamura resigned. His pass pawns are not going anywhere because black already has a mating attack on the white king. For starters the bishop is hanging and if you play bishop g6 then there is knight e4 with a checkmate threat of rook f2. And the engine gives a forced checkmate in 11 moves here after white gives away all his material. Another way to win after bishop g6 saving that bishop is bishop d5 check, king g3 and then rook g2 check wins the bishop and wins the game. Finally we can look at white just giving up that bishop and start running with his only trump card, the b pawn, b6. That pawn will not get any further because there's bishop d5 check, king g3 and knight h5 check, and the white king will get checkmated again. Crushing victory of Wesley So, of who now of his first seven games had won five. He finished the day with two draws. This summarizes Wesley So's rapid event in Leuven. He beat Karana, beat Mamadjarov and drew against Mashim Vasela Grav on day one. On day two he beat Giri and Grishuk and had a draw against Aronyan. We just saw the game in round seven against Nakamura, another crushing win. And he finished his event with draws against Karyakin and Anand. The event is not finished yet because after nine rounds of Rapid we'll have 18 rounds of Blitz on June 15th and June 16th. The time control is 5 minutes per game plus a 3 second delay and a win will give 1 point and a draw half a point. So Wesley So is not there yet, he has not won the event yet, he still has to play 18 rounds of Blitz, Blitz to protect his lead. Hope you enjoyed this report on the rapid part of the Your Next Move event, the first event of the 2018 Grand Chess Tour. If you liked the video please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel. Please leave a comment, I will read them all and I will reply to them all. You also may want to check out my Chess 2 Progress channel. The link is in the description box. This is Rick for Chess 2 Impress. Thank you for watching.